Oi, fellow comrades, this is Squid Tard here, back with another episode of the Squid Tard Podcast. Uh, got, a, got a good one for you today, folks. Uh, the Florida versus Miami game is almost here, and I wanted to make a Squid Tard Podcast episode about the game. We have some very special guests here with us today uh, for this game, and uh, he he's a returning favorite. Uh, the almighty Squid Lord makes a return. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Going on, go Gators! Yep, and for the and uh, first coming Miami fan here, uh, very very uh, v- very special guy. Uh, he has a YouTube channel of his own. Introducing for the first time on the Squid Tard Podcast, Slappin TV. Hello, hello, it's your boy Director Chill Slappin TV. Yeah, so um. I've brought, I've brought these guys here today to talk about the uh, the Florida Miami game. I'm not a fan of either of these two teams, so I'm probably not going to have any opinions on it. But I'll go ahead and break it down for y'all. Uh, this game is definitely, without a doubt, the biggest game of week, week zero, and oh boy, am I excited for it! And of course, these guys are excited for it too. And uh, before this game comes along, I just wanted to give uh, these two these two guys some time to debate about it and uh we're gonna start off with you squid lord about why you think uh florida is going to win this game so you can go ahead and give your opinion on it and uh right after that slap in tv you can go ahead and give your opinion on that uh afterwards but squid lord you have the floor go ahead so i'm gonna come out the gate real quick just being respectful okay miami's not a horrible team let's let's get that out of the way but they're not a good team. Let's just come on. They went <laughs> okay, so they barely made a bowl game, and then got thumped by Wisconsin. How do you get thumped by by not even the best team in the Big Ten? Like that. That's kind of it's kind of trash there. But that's not my point. I don't. I just. I. I just don't see a situation where Florida really loses to Miami because Miami, yes, they do have a good defense. I, Miami's defense is really good. But Florida, um, Florida's the, Florida, I think there's too much on Florida's offensive side to really – to really – I think the game will be close. I think the game will be close. I think that – Miami's defense will be able to do enough to maybe keep Miami in the game for maybe the first half, uh, maybe even first three quarters. But I just think that Miami's offense isn't proven enough, and Miami's offense hasn't really proven to anybody. And and aren't they starting like a freshman quarterback, uh, Jaron Williams? Um, so their offense is not proven. Uh, we don't know how good their offense is going to be. Uh, all we ha- the only information we have is to go off last year. If we're going off last year, Miami had a pretty bad offense. So I just don't I don't think Miami's offense is going to be able to do enough to really keep them in the game, especially with a good a defense as good as Florida's. Um, the only the only way I see Miami winning this game is maybe if Miami's defense gets some turnovers, which that's not going to happen. Um, they got to bring out the turnover chain for that. Um, and I just I don't see I just don't see that happening. I think that Miami's offense is way too stagnant, way too, way too, just not proven yet. They're, I mean, they're starting a freshman quarterback. We don't know Manny Diaz in his first year. Um, we already know about how he can't recruit, so uh, we already know about that. But um, I think the I think it, Miami's defense is going to be able to keep him in the game for a little while. But I just think that Florida's talent, the talent gap between Florida and Miami, is going to close quickly. And then Florida's going to pull away near the end. Well, All yeah, right. you've heard it from him. Now we'll go ahead and go to <laughs> Slapping TV. Uh, what are what are your opinions on this? Okay. To revise the question, um, why would Miami win? Well, I'm going to break down a couple of things for you. Um, first off, Squid, you're absolutely right. Our offense is unproven. Um, but... What a lot of people outside of the 305 don't understand is nothing that you've seen in Miami's literally history is what we have on offense and now. 
Let me start with Manny Diaz. Manny Diaz, defensive coordinator, led one of the best defenses in college football last year, top five. Um, as far as havoc rating, tackles for loss, um, turnovers, one, two, three in those categories, probably just behind Clemson and Alabama. Um, but here's the thing. Manny Diaz, first thing he did was come in and he fired everybody on the offensive, on the offensive side. Offensive coordinators, um, skilled positions, quarterback coach, which was uh, uh, John Rick, Mark Rick's son, gone. Uh, the strength and conditioning coach, gone. Then as you get to the recruiting aspect, yes, it's hard to bring in recruits after you've been hired je- December 28th and recruiting signing day is February 12th. So what he did was, Manny Diaz, he went ahead and let the recruiters from the last year, 2018 team, go ahead and do what they had to do. Then he fired them. Now what you have is, and all people are not understanding this, Manny Diaz is a very smart head coach. He knows defense, but he also knows he doesn't know offense. So he brings in Dan Enos, the same guy who had to bring in Jalen Hurts and also bring out Tua in two years back-to-back respectively, to win games against Georgia and to win against Clemson, right? Um, that's Dan, e- Dan Enos' offense. So, And as the Florida Gators know, that the only really full tape that they have besides the Alabama is going all the way back when Dan Enos was a head coach at Arkansas. Okay, so as far as, yes, I will tell you this, you are right. Our offense is unproven. It's unknown, but guess what? That's a gift and a curse. You don't know what we're going to do. You don't know what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. Okay. My second point uh, that you made, uh, turnovers. Miami has the best three linebackers in college football. And maybe not individually, but as a group. Zach McLeod, Shaq Quarterman, and Pickney have all played every single snap the last three years. Okay. So another thing. So the turnovers are going to happen. Okay. And then um, to get to, and like I said, oh, and then my final point is Manny Diaz cannot recruit. Manny Diaz didn't have time to recruit. He had two weeks. The recruits, most of the recruits that we had had already left. But what Dan Dan Enos, or I'm sorry, Manny Diaz did do was the transfer portal. Okay. So we picked up, yes, we didn't recruit freshmen, but bringing in KJ Osborne, bringing in Trayvon Hill, bringing in strong safety from UCLA, Bubba Bolden, or USC, excuse me. Um, That is where he made up for that. So just to hit on your points, you know, yes, you you did strike valid points, but you didn't see the flip side of the coin. Yeah, and um, I mean, me personally, I I think Shaq Quarterman – is probably one of the best linebackers individually as a linebacker in the whole nation. I'm not going to argue with you on that. And yes, you guys do have a top, a top five, um, like linebacker core as a total as a whole. So, I mean, I, I would agree with you on that. And your defense is very, very good. So I'm not going to argue with you on that. Okay. And, and let me, let me bring up another point. <clears throat> so you said unknown. I, I, I covered that. Um, my next thing is let's get to effort. I've watched every Florida scrimmage and every Florida practice from April 10th to yesterday. Effort. Florida is having something going on in their locker room um, and with their team. And I don't know if it's because you guys hit a high ceiling and much respect to a 10-3 win season. No disrespect whatsoever, but you know what that 10 and 3 season reminds me of? Miami's 10 and 3 win season. Two years ago, right? You guys came off a four win season, right? You bring in Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen turns around the team. This year, you guys go 10 and 3. That's what we looked like two years ago. The only, and the similarity is this last year, you guys won games that you should have won. That's the same thing Miami did when they went 10 and 3. We had four games where we won in the fourth quarter, usually within the last two minutes. Um, And so now you guys are in the same position that Miami was last year. 
how much effort are these players really willing to put in? Because the head gets big in South Florida, or let's just say Florida, Florida State, Florida. Head gets big quick, right? Um, so now let's see how much effort. I mean, there's been locker room controversies. You guys have some good commits either getting kicked out of school or uh, transferring, which we have to, don't get me wrong. Uh, but your players aren't transferring because um, they don't think y'all are going to be good. They're transferring because there's turmoil in the locker room. Our, our transfers that were signed to Miami are transferring because they know they're not going to play. I got a Tate Martell jersey on right now. He might be a t- he might be a wide receiver by week three. Okay, so that's another thing. I mean, what do you have to say about that? Well, I mean, I would agree with you on that. Uh, there are a lot of questions, especially when it comes to the offseason distractions when it comes to Florida. But, like, I just – I don't – me personally, like, I understand that there are – there are times that offseason distractions have ruined, like, a team's season, and they've distracted mm-hmm. a, a team from being as good as they could be. So I do see what you're saying, and I do acknowledge that. But what I think is – what I think is I think that I, – I, I hope – I hope that by, the, by that time we may be able to forget it and at least, like, I don't know. It's just there, it, there's so many unknowns, if you're asking me. There's so many unknowns when it comes to all that uh, with the, you know, conf, with how well we're actually going to be able to play up to our actual, like – talent because we do have a lot of talent but oh it's most that, definitely yeah it's, it's, no it's doubt. that it's that mental barrier we have to get past from all those off-season issues and i think as long as we can leave those in the rear rear view mirror we should have a pretty good season but i that's why i'm partly nervous going into this miami game that's why i'm partly nervous i i, I want to be confident as a florida fan of course because I mean, no matter what, no matter who you're playing, um, you're going to be con- – you, you, you want your team to beat that other team, of course. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No, no matter who you're playing. Um, but that's why I've been nervous about this Miami game since all this offseason stuff, like, started. Since mm-hmm. all this, like, offseason, the transfers. Um, we just saw, like, last week, John Huggins got kicked off a team mm-hmm. uh, about Derek Mason's daughter. So, I think as long as we can keep those, like, separated from the football itself, then I think we could have a pretty good season, and I think we could end up beating Miami. Because I think talent-wise, um, I know you probably don't agree with me, but talent-wise, I think we're better than Miami, talent-wise, especially okay, on well, offense. Okay, well, let me, let me touch that right there, talent-wise. I will 100% agree with you. And it's not for the fact that Florida recruits better players than Miami. You have been able to get better recruits than Miami um, because y'all were good last year, right? So you brought in a new class. Um, But here's the thing about what you said. You will be able to get through those problems. But can you do it in four days? That's the issue. See, with Miami, and this comes to my third point of why we'll win, is pride. For any of the younger viewers out did, that did not know, Cryberry, Crybaby Spurrier, if you're a C Spurrier fan, no disrespect. I love C Spurrier, by the way. But I use that term because that's what they call him. He's the one who took Miami off the schedule years ago. Okay? Um, but when I watch the Florida practices and spring games and fall games, for instance, let's talk about the spring game. You guys had your Hall of Famers, and y'all got some good. Joey Galloway is my favorite. Doing best 40 time in NFL combine of all times. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a legend. Yeah, yeah. legend. No, much respect. Much respect. But during the spring game, you guys were running out there, and it was like a fan, you know, like, 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 a, like a, a fan showcase where y'all were just having a good time. And that brings me back to the pride and the seriousness. And granted, you had a 10-3 season last year in SEC, which is nothing, nothing to be shy of. But I think that there's a serious possibility that some of those players aren't taking it as serious as they should. And one of the reasons is because Florida took Miami off the schedule years ago. I mean, we haven't played since 2013, which we won that game. 
Um, and before that was the Tim Tebow game. We all know Tim Tebow was at Florida. Shout out Tim Tebow. I love Tim Tebow, by the way. It's my guy. Um, yeah, Sam. yeah, I love I love Tim Tebow, hands down. Um, but I, I think that some of those younger Florida players, they don't remember what it's like to watch Florida versus play Miami. Now, here's the thing about Miami. They hungry. We hungry. Everybody's doubting us. No one thinks we're going to do anything. Everybody's debating if it's going to be good offense, good, bad, bad defense, whatever. I'm going to give a simple stat, and I'll, I'm going to pass it back to you. Miami's defense, like I said before, last year was top five. Our offense was bottom five. Okay? Same linebackers we still have. So this is my defense. This is my offense. Same linebackers. Yes, not technically the same head coach, but he's the or same head coach or the defensive coordinator. But secondly, he's just still running the defense. Top five, one eighteenth in overall offense. All Miami has to do is get above halfway. If we can get a top thirty, top twenty five offense with knowing what our defense can do, and with the upgraded special teams with Lou Hudley, the Australian with the crazy tattoos that look like he's sixty five years old and been kicking people's butt in rugby and might beat you in a bar fight. I'm actually kind of scared of that. Dude. If I meet him at a game, I'm like, Lou, we're good, dude. I don't want no problem. He was actually been in a bar fight in Friday Night Lights, a TV show. Seriously. Um, I think that's where the underestimation and the unknown comes from. So, I mean, do you honestly think that your players are really taking this game serious? I know it's SEC, and I know ACC has been trashed, and technically, Colts has been trashed. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say ACC has been trashed because you got Clemson for the last five years. Really, there's been nobody else. So let's just say ACC's been trashed, and I will, admit, I will admit that. But do you think that there could be some unestimation on the side of the Florida Gators for this game? Well, here's, here's the thing, and I do understand the points you're making. Um, and they're very well possibly could. There's, there's a small chance. But I, I understand the reason why we're doing that fun, why we're, why we're doing what we did in the spring game, and I can explain it to you. So, for ever since 2017, everybody knows about our 2017 year. Um, I don't have to go into detail about how bad it was. Wins, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where we looked like um, a half drunken team out there. Um, but, like, the reason why is because attendance, the, num- the attendance numbers and the amount of fun and, like, the amount of energy that was in Gainesville after that just sunk to an all-time low because as a, as a program that's been traditionally very good and traditionally top, you know, uh, one of the top programs in the nation for like the yeah, past at least 20 top 15. years. Yeah, at least exactly. top 15 every year. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, it, it, really, it really seeped us of a lot of our energy after how bad that season was, getting blown out by Georgia, um, mm-hmm. losing to, to a – to a Florida State that barely made a bowl game. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just losing all these games that we really should have won. We lost to South Carolina that year. We lost to Mizzou. And not just lost, we got blown out. So it's not a fact of we're not taking what's coming up seriously. It's not any of that. It's bringing that fun back to Gainesville that we lost after that 2017 season. And – Bringing, some, bringing back some of that attendance that has been low because that high attendance is what gave us the nickname The Swamp and what made us such a feared atmosphere to play at in the first place. So you, that's, that's why we're doing what we do. Um, and I hope there's not any kind have of... have fun and, and bring their fans back. You know what? I was down in Orlando for Camp and Worth Stadium for the spring game. And as we're driving, I didn't realize that Gainesville was on 75 going to Orlando. And then I got to Orlando and they said, that's that's Gators country. Yeah. I won't give you a pass on fan base. And here's why. Coral Gables is technically one of the richest suburbs in what you would call Miami, but it's not. Where the stadium is at is Miami hood, right? That's far. I think it maybe 20 miles. From the stadium. So most of those college kids aren't going there. And here's another thing. Miami is also a private university. So, I mean, South Florida University has more students. University of Miami does. And it's true. It's true. Sort. So I, I can't give you a pass on that because I think the Florida Gator Nation is so big. I live in Georgia. 
I can go from here to my gas station, which is five minutes away, and I, I can pass three Gator cars. As a matter of fact, the Walmart that I live in has Florida Gator stuff. They have Florida Gator stuff. They have LSU stuff. They have Tennessee stuff. They have Georgia stuff. No Georgia Tech, but that's another story. Yeah. So I can't give you a pass on that. But I will say this. Just from seeing how the practices work, and it's not just the players. I'm not going to put this on the players. You guys have some of the best athletes all around, just like Florida State does, just like Miami does. But just watching the practices and the coaches just walk around. There's no intensity. There's no effort. That is what's giving me the nod right there. Because you watch the Miami practice and watch the Miami interviews. If you go back and look at last year, if the Mark Rick is our head coach and they go through the interviews, all the players have this straight face on them, right? And then go look at Kane's, Kane's All Access and watch. Just You don't have to press like, just scroll all the way down. Every player and every coach has a fucking smile on their face. Excuse me for cussing. I, I don't know if it's PG. But that's my thing. It's the effort. I don't think Florida Gators are taking us serious. Well, and yeah, I understand. I understand what you said. Um, but the point I was making is that yeah, there there are ga- there are Florida Gator fans, you know, all around the United States. Um, you mm-hmm. could really you could really say that for any like blue blood program or any really big Miami even has fa- like fans all over the United States. So, I mean, we like, do. yeah, most definitely. So, yeah, that that is true, but. What I was really pointing at is our attendance, the the attendance at every at every game, before that set, mm-hmm. 2017 year, and even a little bit while that 2017 year, we had really good attendance. We we maxed out almost all like every single game we played. But then after mm-hmm. that, you know, you you, you look you look at these like large panned out like camera shots of just like the stadium and, and it's and it's whole, and you see so many empty seats. You'd see all the top rows empty, like the big upper deck, like almost fully empty. Um, it's bringing that fun back to Gainesville that really we lost in that 2017 year and actually getting people to come to our game because we lost a lot of people because of just how bad that 2017 year was. I mean, our even, even the years with 2015, 2016, where we didn't have really good offenses at all, but we still managed to win the East mm-hmm. because of how bad the East was. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Even in even in those years, um, I think that we we still like we still even managed to get very good attendance to max attendance. So I think that's what Dan Mullen's trying to do. And if we don't take it seriously, I think we are going to get punched in the mouth come Saturday. I think we will, um, because if we aren't taking it serious, and we should, we should take every game serious. Um, and that's what really what Dan Mullen and the coaching staff's trying to get this team to do is to take every game serious mm-hmm. and to play consistently every single week, week in, week out, play with the same consistency. Because last year, we were very inconsistent with how we played. Um, you know, we had a good string. Uh, like, we had, like a, like, a string of be- games in, like, the beginning, in the first half of the season, where we played decent but not good enough. Uh, then after that Georgia game, we played really bad. We lost to Mizzou. We almost lost to South Carolina. We we ju- we got back into that game in the third and the fourth quarter. Um, yeah. And then that last stretch of like that very last set of games and that bowl game against Michigan, we played probably our best football that whole year. Um, you know, blowing out Florida. That was a State. very good game, by the way. Oh yeah. That 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 that, that, that I was impressed by the Michigan game. Because you guys have struggled in years past against them, I was impressed. Yeah, that, that was our first time ever beating Michigan, and it felt really good. Um, but like you know, blowing out Florida State like we did, um, you know, obviously you're going to blow out an FCS team. I mean, if you don't, then I mean, I can't say anything because we lost to Georgia Southern, but that's not the point. Um, <laughs> um, that's hard. That's a hard one right there. It, it is. It, it, it was. It was a hard one. It was really hard. Um, I remember my dad getting so mad at that, you know, he was, he was, he was throwing shit and he was like, he was so mad about that, but (laughs) like, it was not a pretty sight, but, uh, but no, like we played the best 
off we played the best we could at that end of the season. And I think what Dan mm-hmm. Mullen's trying to do is a lot of these players were really down on themselves and a lot and the, the confidence on our team was really down after that 2017 year. That 2017 year was a horrible year for us offensively because Felipe Franks, nine touchdowns, eight interceptions. That's a tr- that's yeah. a horrible stat line. Yeah, horrible. that is. It's too low and it's too lopsided. Like it's too close to, to 50-50 for a quarterback. Yeah, especially for a team that – like a program like Florida where us fans, we want a lot out of our quarterback. We want, mm-hmm. we want a quarterback that can sling it around. We want a quarterback that can make plays. Um, that's what we want. We want a quarterback that can get to our receivers. And I think this year we have probably the best batch of receivers we had since I would probably even say um, maybe 2010. I mean, 2010, yeah. we had a pretty good batch. Uh, 2011, mm-hmm. we were good. I mean, we had Andre mm-hmm. DuBose, you know, all those. Um, but I, uh, I, I think that what Dan Mullen's trying to do is inst- instill a lot of the confidence back into this team that was lost in 2017, and I think not one year is, is going to do that. Not just one year. is consistently doing that year in and year out, bringing that confidence back to that program, the confidence in the fans, and actually being 100% confident in their Gators like they used to be. Um, mm-hmm. And those players believing in the system that Dan Mullen's trying to trying to and still into them, especially Felipe Franks, who Felipe Franks runs a lot on confidence. If he doesn't have much confidence, you see it in the Georgia game, the Mizzou game, especially yes. in the Mizzou game, especially yeah, Missouri. The, Mizzou game. the last couple of years, Missouri, Missouri has been the thorn in his ass. Oh, know? for sure. For sure. And it, they, they have like, they have not, <laughs> they've been like, they've been like the dog that scared off the gator. It's so weird. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just makes no sense to me. Um, like, and so he needs to instill confidence in Felipe Franks in order for him to be a good quarterback, especially playing good defenses and good teams year in and year out in the SEC. And this week one, this, well, week zero game against mm-hmm. Miami, which Miami had the top five defense, in my opinion. Um, I mean, I'm, I, as much as I'm not a believer in your offense, I'll give you all the credit in the world on your defense. Uh, your defense is lights out. Um, I'll give you all the credit there. So, like, I just – I find it hard to – I just – I think that we got to have confidence in order to win games because confidence really fuels our team. Um, mm-hmm. And I think we are taking it seriously, and I hope those younger players are taking it seriously. And if, they, if they're not, as if I were the coach of Florida, I'd get, I'd get them taking it seriously real quick. Because if we lose this game against Miami, that could be a bad start to a year that is looking pretty promising. I mean, we have a hard schedule. We have a top. We have one of the top ten hardest schedules in the whole nation. Mm-hmm. But we're a good enough team to at least win eight games in that. In, in that, like, in in all in, in our schedule this coming up year, we're a good enough team to at least win eight of those games. And if we lose Miami, that could be a very sour start to a promising season for us, especially in year two under Mullen and this offense, which I hope is going to be prolific with all the good wide receivers we have. Felipe Franks, hoping he gets that confidence and just overall being a better football team than we were last year. Okay. Um, I definitely definitely see see that. that. It brings up an interesting point because, you know, Dan Mullen and uh, Manny Diaz have some history in Mississippi. So, um that's that's going to be very interesting to see how that turns out um as far as that goes now um here's my thing I'm, matter of fact i'm going to give it to you i got two things i wrote down my weakest thing that i see about florida besides what i pointed out with effort unknown um talent of miami's offense and the pride but the two weakest thing the, the weakest thing i see about Florida's offense is your offensive line. You got one yep, returning yep. starter. I agree. I agree 100%. So your guards and your tackles are, I don't know if they're all freshmen. I know they didn't play. Um, that That's my issue there. Now, granted, we all know about Miami's offensive line. I know sometimes it's a scheme thing, but your scheme hasn't changed. Even some of the Miami faithful, we don't really, we don't truly know what our offense is going to be. 
So that really did take some with offensive line players. But I will give you this. The strongest thing I see about uh, the Florida Gators is their quarterback and your skill players. I think you got one of the best DB cores in the nation. Um, and I think your wide receivers. And also you got a stable of running backs. Um, oh, yeah. P. Ryan, Pierce. I, yeah. Yeah. P. Ryan is, is he's he's Hall of Fame material. I've watched I've been watching games for the last two weeks of P. Ryan. I, I love Pierce. Um, I love P. Ryan, I meant and Pierce yeah. too. But um so I, I think that could be a good plus um for your team. And I would say if Miami were to lose, it would be quarterback play. Now I know about Jaron Williams. I'm from Georgia. I studied him. For anybody who has not seen seen my video on who is Jaron Williams. He was the third best quarterback in the state of Georgia uh, two years ago. He was only behind Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. And he was number three. Um, So I have a lot of trust in him as far as our quarterback play. But our O-line also is young. So that's going to be very interesting um, if how that turns out. I know you guys always have a good front four. Go ahead. Yeah, I think I think our um, the line play this year for both of our teams are going to be pretty interesting because I think both defensive lines and both linebackers are going to probably do. I think I think they're going to pressure the quarterback a lot. I think that you guys are probably mm-hmm. going to pressure Felipe, especially with a young O line playing such a good defense. And um, not to say that Florida's defense is good, but they're good. Um, oh, they're good. Yeah, go, yeah I'll go, give them that. And uh, our front four is pretty good. Um, And I do like David Reese as a linebacker. I think he's probably one of the more underrated linebackers in the SEC. Uh, David Reese is really good, a really sure tackler. Um, Only only has, if if this statistic is right, um, someone can correct me in the comments or something. I think David Reese in his, this is his senior year, he played all three of his years, all, all, Mm -hmm. all three years or two years, I'm not sure, but he only has two or three missed tackles. Mm. It's a pretty good stat. So he's a really sure tackler. Um, That's in the SEC. That's, that's really good. Oh, yeah. Especially in the SEC with all these good running backs. just And yeah. especially Alabama, Georgia. I mean, mm. playing a, a lot of good running backs. Uh, LSU. Oh, yeah. yeah. Playing a lot of good running backs. Ooh. Even Arkansas, a, a two-win team, has, has a really good running back in um, Rakeem Boyd. Or mm-hmm. Rakeem Boyd. Well, uh, you guys have been going on for a very long time, 32 <laughs> minutes, and I, I have a feeling that y'all are just getting started, and man, listening to y'all talk about it, have this debate, it is really, really interesting, and I I honestly wish I could go up, you guys could like go on forever, because I could, I mean, you, you guys sound like you could go on forever with this debate, and that's really, that's that's awesome. Hey, no, no matter what, even if this guy's a Miami fan, I still respect him, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Most I still definitely. respect him. Yeah, I respect the Gators, no doubt. Yeah, that's, that, that, I mean, that's. That's awesome. Well, uh, we've been going on for a total of 33 minutes, so uh, I think we're going to have to cut it uh, cut it right here. Uh, any finalizing yeah. thoughts you all have? How about predictions? What you got, Squid? What, what prediction do you yeah, got? Yeah, what, what are your predictions, Squid? Okay, well, if, you, if you're wanting to know my predictions, he, here's, here's what I think. Both these teams are going to be – uh, both these teams are going to be directly focused on this game, and it's gonna it's gonna be a really really good game in my opinion. I, I think if if you want my opinion, I think Miami is going to last all the way through the game. But honestly, I just think I think Miami is going to come up short. I have to give the game to the Florida Gators in a very very tight, very very tight win. And, and if you all are wanting a score prediction, thirty three to 23 and that i think florida is going to slowly pull away in the fourth quarter but i do think it's going to be an awesome game all the way through i'm going to be watching it for the entirety of it but hey if miami Mm -hmm. proves me wrong i'll eat my crow and uh i mean (laughs) i'll I'll have to do the same i'll have to do the same so yeah yeah all right i'm gonna i'm gonna have to say fellas that it's going to be a lot closer game than the seven point spread that Vegas gives us. For sure. I, think I don't so think too. Miami will blow out Florida. And if we were to lose, I would not be heartbroken or surprised. 
But my score prediction is Miami 24, Florida 21. It's going to come down to a field goal, probably three seconds left. And I hope it's not wide left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so what I think is that I think – Jaron Williams, while, yes, he's very talented, I think he's stepping into a really huge situation, especially first game playing against a really good uh, secondary, a really good D-line, some decent mm-hmm. linebackers. So I think that Jaron Williams, I think, he'll, I think he'll do good in his first game. I, I, I think Jaron Williams is pretty good. I mean, you just threw out the statistic that he was behind Trevor Lawrence and, and uh, Justin, Justin Field. Field. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, I mean, there, there's no shame in being behind those two guys. Uh, there really mm-hmm. isn't. Um, especially one of those, Trevor yeah. Lawrence. But uh, yeah, he's <laughs> um, he he he's insane. He is insane. Um, but I think that the score, I do. I don't agree with the whole seven point spread. Um, I think it's going to be really close. And I I agree with slapping TV. I think I think it will indeed be a three point game. Um, mm-hmm. At the most, maybe a six point game. I just don't. I don't think no team is winning by a touchdown or more. I just think it's it's way too close. There's way too many. Both teams have really good defenses, so I just think I way think too it's really many hard. variables. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. Way too first many. First game of season. Yeah. Yeah, Manny Diaz's first game ever coaching as a head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, and I, and all the off season distractions for us and our O line. Um, so there's a lot of variables that go into it, and we're only how many days from away from this game? Uh, not including four. Five. Not including five. Four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, five. It's, it's yeah, five. It's the nineteenth. Yeah, it's and those, popping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and the variables are still like not. They're not. You know, there there's no questions to these variables yet, and we're so close to this game, and I'm excited. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm um, definitely excited. Not I'm not just because excited. not just because Florida Gators football is starting, but college, college football, football in general, general is starting. And, yes. I mean, and yes. I'm, heck yeah, I'm man. so happy. Heck yeah. And, Listening to you but, guys talk about it is making me really excited for this game. But my, my final prediction, final score prediction, I think – now, obviously, I'm a homer, so I'm going to go with Florida. Um, okay. But I could see this going the other way. It's say, you know, Miami makes some plays on defense and we don't exactly play our best in our first game. I could see us losing this game. But either way, I think this game comes out to a field goal, like Slap mm-hmm. the TV said. My prediction, I think it'd be a little bit higher scoring, maybe. I would go 30 27. I think that's what we'll go. I'll go 30 27. Yeah. Okay. This, uh, this is going to be th- one of the best games to watch this football season. I can, uh, all, all, of the, all of the talk f- between these two fan bases, this is going to be, <laughs> I mean, this should be considered a rivalry, honestly. This is. It used to be. I mean, I mean, it should be. I guess we we still we still consider it as a rivalry in the state of Florida. But did, did you, you hear? Uh, did you hear that we we scheduled a home and home? Did you hear recently? Florida mm-hmm. and Miami scheduled a home and home. Yeah. Oh, and nice. uh, I think 2022, 2023, we scheduled a home and home. I hope it's not 2022 because we got to play Alabama that year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we play Alabama coming up. Uh, I will tell you this, and I'll give you my final statement before, you know, our sign off. But I will tell you this. The rest of college football, you are welcome. Because what you're about to see is the roots of what college football is. Period. Mm -hmm. Not just in the South, but the roots. It's always the Mm -hmm. first game of the season. If it's Florida, Florida State. If it's Miami, Florida State. If it's Miami, Florida. You are welcome to be Mm -hmm. here. Come watch it. Yeah, you're doing oh, yeah. right, man. You, you and, are you are absolutely right. I'm so I'm I'm so excited. Like, I I, I can't like it's Saturday couldn't come quicker. I'm not even lying. I know. So, <laughs> Tell me about it. This is going to be the slowest week in all of college football. So just just I try and get through it. Just try to get through it. But uh, yep. That's that's the podcast. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you watched all the way through, or even if you skip till the end to just see what our predictions are, thank you guys for watching either way. But just know this: if you watch this, make sure that you go down in the description and subscribe to Slappin TV. This guy makes great content, and uh, just ma- make sure you make sure you subscribe to him. Uh, He's a good guy. Yeah, and if, and of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to uh, Squid Tard. 
and Squid Tart Sports for more uh, sports content. And just make sure to subscribe to the channel, but make sure for sure that you subscribe to uh, Slappin' TV. But yep, we've been going on for, for a total of... <laughs> yeah, we've been going on for 40 minutes. That's crazy. <laughs> Uh, it seems quick too it seems yeah. quick but you know it, it does, yeah. we're yeah. definitely gonna have to have you on the squid tart podcast again for sure okay sounds good well you know what monday morning after we figure out who wins or loses somebody's gotta eat crow so that's for sure you know, I, 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 I think bring some gator back from south yeah. texas and, and I, either gator way though <laughs> <laughs> I, wow wow <laughs> okay i love gator right. so it, it's nothing personal i just love gator <laughs> oh, but I know why you're eating it that specific day. <laughs> True. Either way, though, I, I awesome. wish. Either way, though, considering the fact that I'm a I'm a Tennessee fan, they're probably going to lose Week Zero, so um, I have to look for this game. <laughs> Uh, My wife's a Tennessee fan too, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the best of luck to both of these teams. I'm hoping this is a the, the best game of college football. Uh, this season and i have a feeling it, it's going to be one of the best this season and i'm so excited for it but just all think, I, thank all you guys I hope, all I, I hope is that both teams stay healthy yeah That's all I me, hope. Too. me too me too me too I absolutely both teams stay healthy. Keep, keep these keep these young kids healthy man let's have a good time you know and just you know let's play a good game for the start of the one, 150th season of college football let's, let's have a good game. 150 we start on zero <laughs> yep Yep. Last thing I'll say is uh, I'll have a halftime and post game reaction to that on Squid Tard Sports. And uh, yep, that's all. That's all that needs to be said. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, make sure you subscribe to Slappin TV as well as Squid Tard. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Power to Tardaria. Beep beep.